A pleasant good morning to you all and welcome to Ecotrust Society's first virtual session. I am Latifa Wickham and I will be your moderator for this morning's session. Now, the Ecotrust Society is the main environmental club at the University of Guyana and it is based in the Faculty of Earth and Environmental Sciences. This club focuses on environmental education, awareness, and advocacy by hosting and participating in a number of seminars, workshops, and field activities. However, as a result of the pandemic, these sessions are now being done virtually. Now, just a few Zoom call ethics before we begin. One, please keep all microphones muted throughout the session. Two, if you wish to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll unmute your mic so that you can speak. Three, please ensure that you have a quiet background and feel free to utilize the chat box for questions, comments, or queries. Nonetheless, we have a very enlightening presentation this morning on hydroponics. And hydroponics is the cultivation of crops without the use of soil. This presentation will be done by Mr. Lanfamon. Now, Mr. Lanfamon graduated from St. Joseph High School, went on to the Guyana School of Agriculture, and then he further pursued a degree at the University of Guyana in agriculture. He is 25 years old and currently works at the Hydromed Services in Guyana. He is also an elder at his local church, a husband and father of one. His hobbies include chess and scrabble, and his motto is to be stronger than yesterday. So, without further delay, I would like to invite Mr. Lanfamont to do his presentation. Thank you very much, Ms. Latifa. Um, good morning, everybody. It's indeed a privilege and honor to be here to pass on knowledge as it relates to hydroponics. Um, just a little nervous, but just bear with me and we'll get through this together. Can everyone see the screen? All right. Yes. All right, so this is an introduction to hydroponics. Um, as you can see, it's 101. It's definitely the basic, basic. Um, there's no need to learn the, the advanced stuff unless the Ecotrust Society is planning to have a hydroponic farm, which I would encourage to have you guys do or set up because hydroponics is, as you know, is one of the techniques that we are currently using around the world to combat or in combat against the terms or conditions climate change. Um, it's also one of the suitable techniques used in urban areas. We realize that a lot of places are developing and Many persons are trying to move away from the traditional agricultural framework. And so there still needs or there still needs to be something or system in place as it relates to ensuring food security. And so one of those techniques that helps us address that need or address that issue of food security is the hydroponic system. Now, Hydroponics would have been practiced for a very long time. It's not necessarily a system that was created um, yesterday. It was something that would have been practiced a very, very long time. Nebuchadnezzar would have had his first hydroponic set up in Babylon, and his was considered one of the wonders of the world at that time. And it was termed, if I don't, I don't know if anybody heard of it, but it was termed the the hanging gardens. So in essence, 
even though hydroponic is fairly new in Ghana or around the world today, it was something that was practiced back in the days. Egypt also would have practiced um, hydroponic systems and China as well. Now, the term hydroponics, while it is defined cultivating plants in water, is important to highlight that when we go through the presentation or done in the presentation, we realize that there are other mediums or other substitutes for soil that will be used in the hydroponic system. So in essence, it's actually a technique that is used to grow plants without soil. And that will be your traditional clay and mud, which is found in your backyard. Now it utilizes different techniques and technologies so that roots can absorb a balanced nutrient solution that is dissolved in the, the medium or the substrate. And in the case of this presentation, we'll be looking at all of the substrates, but more so the water substrates in specific. Now, the benefits of hydroponics is that there is a possibility Now, why is this? Because in the traditional agricultural setup, the process. Hello? Hi, Mr. Lanferman. I think you got um, job just now. Yeah. You could just continue to share your, your screen and okay. proceed. You still seeing the screen? No, you got to share it back again. All right. So we were looking at the benefits of hydroponics. And as I was going through, I was highlighting on the first point of hydroponics is that you will be able to produce more products in less time uh, as opposed to using the traditional method. One of the things with the traditional method is that you find that there is a process to get to the um, production of plants or the production of crops for um, personal use or for business purposes. Now that process involves land preparation. Sometimes it requires leveling, plowing, and depending on how much the area has been degraded, it will relay how much work that will, will have to be inputted to get that site back to an optimum level to do planting. So hydroponic removes that um, laboring period into just reducing it to less time to do um, producing crops. So you have the possibility of producing more products in less time. All right, so also there is the benefit of producing cleaner and fresher products. Now this is due to the cases of the control of insect pests. In a traditional agricultural system, it's kind of difficult to control pests and insects, whereas opposed in the hydroponic system, you can be able to create shade houses that will enable you to keep out those harmful insect pests. So it will mean that your projects will, your produce will stay safe and they will, they will be clean. Now, plants can have a balanced supply of air and water nutrients. Now, as highlighted before with the second point, the hydroponic system once established, you are the one who's in control of that system. So everything as it relates to nutrient supply, to air, temperature, humidity, everything as it relates to the production of that crop is controlled by the user. And as, a, as opposed to the open system in the, in the field, you tend to have no control over that. So whatever happens within the field, you can't really regulate or adjust. Whereas in a hydroponic system, you can do that. 
which ensures that the produce that you have can have a continuous supply of nutrients, air, and it can be, and they can have a regulated temperature because you ultimately have that control over the temperature. Now, one of the things in a hydroponic system is that you're able to eliminate weeds and seedlings, the unwanted seedlings. Now, this is easily done because in the hydroponic system, what is grown there is what you put. As opposed to, I don't know if anybody have a kitchen garden in their, their backyard and you probably dig up a few beds and so on and you place it there. You will have the crop that you place there, but there will also be other crops that you won't have um, decided or decided to plant. So the, the issue of weeds is eliminated as it relates to the hydroponic system. Also, the concept of reducing turnaround time between planting as no soil preparation is required. So we highlighted this at the first benefit that the process of land preparation is eliminated in the hydroponic setup. Now, many persons are now moving towards the hydroponic system because of this fast turnaround. So you have one batch or a thousand heads of lettuce coming in and you have that in your system. So you, you're made to art, someone orders that 1,000 lettuce from you. When they reach the stage of maturity, you can ship those out as quickly and then bring a new set of seedling in and start the process over again. So within six weeks time, you can have a new set of lettuce to send out to your buyer or, or to the people that you supply. Whereas in a traditional agricultural center, that will, that will take some time because whenever you have crops on the field, they use up the nutrients. And there are other things that are competing, competing for the nutrients on the, on the land, not just the plants or the crops that you plant. You have weeds, you have, you have other, other things that are competing for that nutrient within the soil. Sometimes some nutrients, because they're interacting within the soil, they might not be available to your plants. And so it takes time for you to build back that state of um, optimum for your plants to grow. And so a hydroponic system will be able to reduce, reduce that turnaround time. All right. So, but these are just some of the advantages as it relates to the hydroponic system. Now, some disadvantages, and these disadvantages are more speaking to the commercial, on the commercial scale. Many times, as I'm sure, is that hydroponics is done as a hobby. And because many persons don't have that large amount of space, especially in the town areas, they probably have most of their land treated. And so hydroponics, as mentioned before, is that one way that they can have some form of um, kitchen produce so that they can use to substitute within their um, within their home. Now, these disadvantages, as I mentioned again, is is more speaking to on a larger scale. So, whenever you invest or you invest big, there is major losses that can come due to um, small mishaps or things that you may not have planned for. So on the commercial scale, there is a need to understand the technical knowledge of the principles of hydroponics. Many times the principle they're speaking to, many times the principle they're speaking to is as re relates to nutrient formulation. That is a big point because many times you have a, a, a a large open space or a large shade house of crops being grown by the hydroponics technique. And if there is one small error as it relates to that formulation of the nutrient, then that can throw the whole system out, either for if, either on, on, the, on both extremes, either less or more. So if you have too much nutrients within that system, it can cause the plants to die if you have less it can also cause the plants to die and most times you find that when there's nutrient deficiencies within crops 
you tend to see them in the leaves, in the stems, and then later on, you can see root decay or in the roots. So on, on a commercial scale, the other disadvantage is that there is a high initial investment. One of the other things is that these commercial places, they will have um, large areas or large shade houses where they have the hydroponical techniques inside. And they will have to have pumps to regulate or distribute the flow of water. They will have to also have pumps that will help create oxygen create aeration within the in the system because the roots need to breathe so there needs to be air within the system there needs to be temperature control and many of these equipment tend to be very expensive especially if you're using them on a larger scale on a larger scale some you also need to pay good or great attention to the care of the plant as we highlighted before as an example in the first disadvantage the preparation of that formula is important and plant health control and there needs to be a constant water supply that's also important because if there's no constant water supply then how will the the roots or how will the produce be able to absorb the nutrients which you are given it given to them now in the hydroponic system there is two forms of production systems. Now, there is the open system and then there is the closed system. Now, the open system is where the nutrient solution is mixed and applied to the plant as required. Now, this might save some money as it relates to um, being cost effective, but many persons are opting out to use the closed system or the closed production system as it relates to hydroponics, which we will go into in a few. Um, the images above show the outline of the open system production. And in the top left-hand corner, I don't know if you guys are able to see my mouse moving. Let me see if I can get a laser pointer. So you have here the setup of a open system now he has, or this person, or this producer, or this farmer has the system open with pipes running around his backyard. Um, he's planting, this looks like tomatoes. And in each of the pipes, there is punched holes whereby he plays cups and then he plays the plants inside. Now you might want to know what is happening in this system. Now, the substrate, as we highlighted at the beginning, is that he, he, could, he can have substrates of sun, charcoal, rice hulls, or even sawdust, or even broken clay bricks. Um, in this case, the farmer is having rice hulls. That is a substrate that can be used in the hydroponic system. What's important to remember is that the substrates help to hold the plants. So one of the things that people kind of have mixed up is that hydroponic, the hydroponic system is just pure water. No, that's not the case. There are variations of hydroponics. And then they, that, those variations that you have of hydroponics is like aeroponics, aquaponics, and so on. And so with those variations, the main thing is eliminating the use of soil. And so in these cases, you have here the use of a substrate or a medium to grow the plant. In the case of this, this is aeroponics that they use to grow fruits from a height. They can use something called growing bags. And these are something that is easily done, but the problem with this is not every crop or every produce can be used by this system. Why? Because the aeroponic setup caters for the weight of the crop. So if you want to plant maybe, let's say, pumpkins or something that has a fruit that tend to, tend to be heavy, you've got to really secure the aeroponic setup. As you can see in the image, they're planting pumpkins and they have a very sturdy setup that is going on here. So 
the first production system that we have is the open system. Now, the one that we currently use in Guinea, this is one example of the open system. Before I go on to the second one that we use in Guinea, these are the ones that we call the floating routes. Now, water is also a substrate that is used, well, the, the most common substrate that we use within the hydroponic setup. All right, so the second production system is a closed system. Now, this is the system that we use to recycle the nutrients within the whole hydroponic setup. Now, as you can see, there are pipes with hoses that lead to the base of the soil, and this is to regulate that flow. So in this system, you can either turn on or you can turn off at will. But most times the system is an open, the system is always in, in, in movement. So here you have an example of that closed system where the nutrients are continuously recycled throughout the whole hydroponic setup. So you have your plants here within your medium and there is also a pump that is used to recycle the nutrients throughout the whole setup. Now, what's important about this variation of hydroponics is that it's termed aquaponics. This is the use of fishes to supply the nutrients to the plants. So you can have a hydroponic system without the fish, or you can have a hydroponic system or a closed system with the fish. It's up to you. Fish is a big business right now. Many persons are going into um, fish production and they're selling the fish produce to many of the restaurants and so on. And so this is a variation that can be used within the backyard or within this limited space. Now, some of the plants, the, the plants or the crops grown in the hydroponic setup is somewhat limited, but they're still good enough to use for food. So we have garlic bulbs that can be used, the carrots, beans, watermelon, coriander, pumpkin, cantaloupe, radish, eschalot, and carrot. Now, tomatoes also can be used within the hydroponic system. Now, why, why this? Because as I mentioned before, sometimes the fruit or the produce that comes from these plants can be too much for the hydroponic system. I mean, a lot of persons may have been doing a lot of readjusting and designing as it relates to the structure of their hydroponic setup, as we highlighted in the aeroponic. But there's so much that can take because each plant will have to produce or have a produce or a fruit. And so that weight, if not properly reinforced, it can cause the system to collapse. And with that investment, you don't want to, you don't want you don't want that or you don't want to have that or have your system collapsing on you. So we're at the stage of construction. So this is the most important stage as it relates to, well, one of the most important stage as it relates to hydroponics. And for this presentation, we will be looking at the box setup. Now, I have in my image a few measurements as it relates to the box. Now, the measurements is up to you. Depending on what spaces you have, that measurement can change. It doesn't have, there's no fixed measurement. The measurements can be adjusted to suit the environment that you have. Let's say you only have 10 by 10, then you have to work with the space that you have. So, in it, so, the idea is that you st you're still able to plant your own foods, even with the little space that you have. Now, the use of, the use of styrofoam is so that the plants can have something to float in. You can't just rest the plants in the, in the, in the water system because that wouldn't make any sense. As highlighted in this image here, we see that the plants are on styrofoams and then they're whole spawns in the styrofoams so that they can remain stable or form. As if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the, the roots are what 
is why it's important to get the plants to absorb the nutrients from the grow box or the hydroponic system. So these are some things that you will need. You'll need to construct the box. You'll need some styrofoam. You'll need some PVC fit tubing or pipes. Now the reason for the pipes, your system will require a pump to recycle the water. So now, as we mentioned before, there are two types of system. There's the closed system, which continues to recycle the nutrients over and over within that hydroponic setup. But then if you opt out for the open system, you will be the one with probably a water can and your fertilizer or your nutrient formulation. You will be the one that will have to add that nutrient to the, to the system. Now, the benefit of the, the open system is that you can add in moderation as to reduce excess, uh, but you'll just have to remember to add because in the hydroponic system, what they have realized is that these plants tend to use up the nutrients very quickly. And so you have to, you have to schedule yourself as it relates to the addition of those uh, of the nutrients. Now these are the other substrates or the medium that can be used in the hydroponic setup. Now most of the other substrates except the water, it is utilized mostly in grow beds or in the aeroponic setup. I don't know if anybody had a chance to ever see the or see plants or see plants grown in bags most times those bags may have a mixture of those substrates. Most times they have rice hulls. Rice hulls is not necessarily the best substrate because of the chemical reactions that they may tend to pose to the nutrients. Silo rice hulls have silicone inside and that tends to bind some of the, the nutrients that you will be, be introduced to later on. And that makes it difficult to for plants to absorb. So if a nutrient is binded or bonded, then the plant roots won't be able to break that bond to access the, the nutrient. Now, we're here at the, the nutrient formulation. As it relates to this, as highlighted before in the advantages, is that you are the one who's in control. But it's also important to know what, you're, what you have to add and what you don't have to add. So in your system, there will be major, there will be basic nutrients or elements that the plant will still be, have access to. That is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now you as the user will have to supply the remaining um, classes or the remaining nutrient sets. That will be the macro and the micronutrients, which in some fertilizers, the also come together and then they have the other trace elements. Now it's important to also realize is that if you are doing your nutrient formulation, you've got to remember if you're using the water base as a substrate or water as your substrate, that your fertilizer or your nutrients must be water soluble. It's also important to remember that some nutrients when combined they tend to become less soluble and so you have to be aware of that so if you have nutrients that mix i know most of the phosphorus when they combine probably with phosphorus combined with the chlorine they tend to create a less soluble material which makes it difficult for plants to absorb the nutrient. Now, to make things easier and simpler, you can simply go to the Caribbean chemicals, explain to them that you're working with hydroponics and you would like to have a nutrient formulation for your crop. Now, there are a few questions that they will ask you as it relates to that. Um, they will ask you at what stage your, your plant is or your produce is. Um, how long you've been planting, and they will give you the formulation based on the stage of plants. Um, and depends on also what you're looking for, because some of the nutrient formulation is to help promote flowering and um, leaf, leaf growth. 
So there will be a document that I will issue to Ms. Duff that can be circulated as it relates to personal nutrient formulation if you want to do that by yourself. But it's important that you have the right formulas for the different elements. So you have the elements nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. So these are your major elements which you use to produce leaves. You have nitrogen which helps with leaf production. So most times you'll find farmers who have lettuce, cabbage, and so on within their system, they will go for formulations with more nitrogen inside because they're at that stage and the crop in itself is a leafy crop. So more leaves means more money. So if you have fruiting crops such like tomato and peppers, then you might want to attack the phosphorus, which helps with flowering. Also for a general something, you might want to use the potassium as a balance to help that. I think somebody wants to ask a question. All right, I think that will be after the presentation. All right, and the final thing as it relates to the agriculture, the hydroponic setup is pest control. Um, as highlighted, while you have maximum or total control over that system, there can still be cases where pests can attack or um, invade your space to where your hydroponic setup is. And so there needs to be ways that you can control these pests. Now, they might not be a lot, and so there are simple economical ways that you can use. There is a formulation with pepper garlic that can be used to help deal with ants, aphids, and mites that may come time to time within your hydroponic setup. Now, you can simply most times you, you find that you only might have a few, so you can simply remove them by hand, by yourself. And it helps keep the system safe if you can be able to monitor the pests and reduce the amount of pests within the um, hydroponic setup. And that is it as it relates to hydroponics. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Lanthamon, for that very informative presentation. Now, we all know that everyone's curious to learn more about hydroponics. So now I'll open the floor for questions and answers from our audience. I believe Mr. Bobby has a question. Am I allowed to speak? Hello, am I allowed to speak? To oh, okay. On his camera just now. Okay, Bobby, you can ask a question. Okay, good day. So, um, Around 2015, 2016, there was an initiative from the Partners of Americas where they did a shade house project where they were going through several communities and whatnot. And they were using the St. Stanislaus um, agriculture place. Um, Farm, yeah. Yes, and they were doing a hydroponics uh, workshop or something of the sort. Now, mm -hmm. I, um, I came in late, but they offered me, um, some, they offered me a basic setup. And mm -hmm. I was able to successfully grow a couple of tomatoes and I was very pleased with the result. When I, I'm, oh, I, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Bobby Samuels. I'm a second year electrical engineering student, now going to be third year. Now, for my right. second year project, I wanted to do an um, hydroponics automated electrical um, hy hydroponics garden for my project. But when I went back to the place, they said they were no uh, longer selling the fertilizer. And that was the main bottleneck for me not being able to complete that project. So in terms of the, where do we acquire the necessary nutrients and fertilizers, I would like assistance in, in guide, guidance in, in that respect. Well, uh, as mentioned, there's the, you can, you can do it personally, right? But you have to do a, um, a deep study as it relates to which nutrients goes with which nutrient. 
and in what ratio those nutrients are um, combined. That's one of the, the, the main thing, because if you get that mixed up, then that can ruin your production or that can, can damage your crop, right? Now, I don't know if you were able to check Caribbean chemicals as it relates to that, but if not, I can personally help you as it relates to the formulation of those nutrients. So the basics is that they create the solutions in A, B, and C. A has mm -hmm. your major nutrients inside, B mm -hmm. has your, my, um, your, my, um, your micronutrients, and C has that trace element for anything that may be missing within the um, whole hydroponic, the whole nutrient application setup. So mm -hmm. I can do that for you, or we can work on that together. I can give you my contact or give Ms. Duff my contact as it relates to that. But the, th the best place to check before you come to me is um, Caribbean Chemicals. Because oh. those guys, they are, they are, remember, they work with this every day. And so oh. they will be able to help you create something that's specifically for you. Okay, um, I actually have a response for that. I already went to them, and when I spoke to them a couple several months ago, they said they didn't really work with hydroponics. They had no idea. Oh. I showed them, I showed her the video and everything, and she's like, they don't really do things like that. And that was that was really good. That was an eye, eye raiser for me. It was an eyebrow yeah. raiser. I was like, wow. So um, what I did is I watched a couple of YouTube videos, and just mm -hmm. as you said, A, B, and C. Um, a mm -hmm. guy managed to put together an A solution using some um, some salt water soluble uh, that has the major micro and macro. Um, yes. A solution A, that's a solution A. Solution B was um, calcium nitrate and solution uh -huh. C was magnesium sulfate. So I was uh -huh. able to get solution A and C, but I never was able to find um, calcium nitrate. Ooh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Um, all right, let me, let, me, let me make a few calls for you. Just send me... I, or send me, I don't know if you can send me or if Ms. Doc can make contact with me so I can get your information so I can help you as it relates to um, receiving the calcium nitrate. Okay, because I, I don't know if that's something that's, you know, like classified or difficult to get or whatnot. And I, that was just based off a YouTube video. I don't know if it'll actually work. The thing is that when... Well, the well that's the thing, because those solutions is, is a matter of what plants you're growing and what desire you're looking to get or what outcome you're looking to get. So, so since you're looking at an, an automatic system for your, for your project, right? Um, I don't want to say that the nutrient formulations aren't important. They are important. But I believe that your emphasis is more so on the, the system being automated. But since you're curious as, about, as it relates to that formulation, it's important that you study or understand what each nutrient provides for the plant. So that's where your key is. Once you understand what the nutrients provide for the plant, then that will, that will assist you in your formulation. Mm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, just one thing to note, when the Partners Americas have their shadow process, they provided solutions A, B, and C, but they vehemently refused to tell you what was inside of it, only that you had to buy it from them. They would not yeah. tell you what was composed of. Because when I, they, I mean, it, they don't, I don't know what to tell you. This, I don't know why people stay that way, but it is what it is. So don't worry, I, I can help you. I definitely can help you with that. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll communicate later then. Um, thank you for your response. Oh. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Bobby, for asking. We have a question in the chat from Mr. Ron Glasgow, and he's asking, in the floating root system, what material can be used to create the flotation device that is readily available to Guyanese? And if you know where I can get them. Um, the flotation device that, that I'm recommending to use is styrofoam. Um, to be honest with you, I don't, the ones that they use from Nari and so on is one that they import. Those are the ones that come with the holes already in the, in the board. But I recommend it styrofoam because remember it's, it's a home project 
and many persons not, might not be able to access the ones that they use on a commercial scale. Now, as it relates to where they get styrofoam, um, I really can't see where they get the, the, the styrofoam from or where we can get styrofoam. Normally, I would check the stores, many supermarket stores, they would normally have these big styrofoam that they have in boxes and so on. And then they would throw them away. And this is where I would go and collect my, um, my styrofoam boxes from or my styrofoam plates. But I can find out for you if you'd like so that you can have somewhere that's you know more reasonable to access. I hope that answers Mr. Glasgow's question. Yes, indeed, I'm quite sure, certain he said thank you. Um, Mr. Gavin is asking, do we have any alternative locations to source materials other than Caribbean chemicals? I have also had issues with them saying they don't have the materials. Um, there are other um, agricultural places like farm, well, farm stuff is mainly machinery. Um, I have to get back as it relates to the other places, but since coming out of agri school and finishing university, they've always sent us to Caribbean chemicals as it relates to getting what we need in terms of the nutrients and the fertilizers and so on. If I can find somewhere else, I, um, someone asked, what about Nari? Um, Nari, you can give it a try. If they know that it's something for a project, they, they probably can assist you as it relates to receiving or getting those chemicals. But most times you'll find that Nari will send you back to Caribbean chemicals. Okay, so I have a question. What yes, is the best water quality to use? Or is water quality necessary in this um, process? Yeah, because I mean, if, if you have poor, I mean, water has the, the thing to, to have diseases. So, um, water that is poor can cause diseases to you or damage your roots. Sometimes some of those, what the water can have elements inside that can react with your nutrients as well, which causes, in, in essence, contamination. What is important or what type of quality of water is they recommend to use distilled water for the hydroponic system. Okay, thank you. And is it necessary to irrigate the nutrients? Yeah, I mean, plants do breed. Well, the roots do breed. So there is a need for oxygen to be supplied to the roots. If there is no oxygen being supplied to those roots, then um, you will be in a ticklish situation whereby your plants can die. <laughs> Ms. Wickham, you are muted. Oh, sorry. Um, I was saying, is there a specific pH that we can use generally across the board for all the crops, or is there specific for specific crops? Yeah, there are, there are crops that prefer an acidic base or acidic pH, then there are crops that are alkaline in nature and so that's one thing I and good that you asked that question because um, as a, a grower you will need something to test the pH of your water from time to time because if you you find that your plant is the displaying signs of um, um, deterioration or decay as, as a result of the water or the pH being too high or too low then there needs to be some form of adjustment as it relates to, to that. So that the pH is a big, big thing, and therefore there needs to be research on the crop and what pH level is appropriate for that produce or that crop. 
Okay, um, Mr. Gavin is asking another question. He is saying that he considered shipping online the calcium nitrate. They sell the material by the bags on Amazon. Are there any general restrictions into bringing those kinds of materials into the country? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I think I, I remember for one of my friend's project that was in our microbiology class, she was able to bring um, lactobacillus to use it to produce yogurt. So I guess if she can bring lactobacillus, why not you can bring um, calcium nitrate? Okay, so um, there seems to be no more questions at this point. Just a reminder, just a reminder, sorry, that um, this recording will be shared on all the Ecotrust Society social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Also, for the participants who did not sign up using the form, please do so so that we can have your emails to send you the documents. Um, I would like to extend sincere thank you to Mr. Lanfamont for gracing us with your presence and sharing your vast wealth of knowledge with us today. The Ecotrust Society is truly grateful for your participation in this session and we look forward to your continued support in the future. And to our beloved audience, thank you guys for attending today's virtual session on hydroponics. I trust that you all learned something new and we'll share this knowledge with your colleagues. This has officially brought us to the end of today's session. Once again, thank you and do have a blessed rest of the day. Goodbye. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy your day.